David Matlin and welcome to Insight Magazine. Well, today we go to Berlin. It's a city that attracts young people from across the world thanks to its vibes, its vitality, and also its affordable rent. Well, among them are 17,000 Israelis. In many cases, their own ancestors had to flee Nazi Germany or were murdered there. Well, for these students and expats, it's impossible to forget that right there in the German capital, the extermination of the Jews was decided. Well, how did they escape from the burden of the past without betraying that memory? Israeli Jews or young Germans, the third generation after the Holocaust, writes together a new page in Berlin's history. Well, here's Generation Tel Aviv Berlin by Yoai Lieberman for I-24 News. In two days' time, Ori and Evelyn will go and settle in Berlin. They enjoy their last moments at the beach in Tel Aviv. Three and a half years ago, the young German woman and the young Israeli man, the grandson of Holocaust survivors, fell in love. One of my grandmothers lost her four sisters. One of my grandfathers was sent to a labor camp, and the other was beaten in the street. One can't get away from it. My whole family came from here. The word Germans was not a word. How can I say that? It was not a word. Acceptable? Yes, no, not receivable. Germany was not positively connoted at home. You can phrase it this way. That was not obvious for me to come as a German, to get integrated into the family and to expect that they could be happy about it. That was hard for me. I found myself a good girl, nice and pretty, but who happens to be German. That does not add anything to it or take anything away from it. It's part of my questioning about moving to Berlin. Or not. Would I be able to live there? And the answer is both yes and no. You may leave this. We'll need it. This is Ben-Gurion, the father of the nation, and this is Konrad Adenauer. He was the German chancellor who gave a start to Israeli-German relations after the war. Evelyn placed it here. Everybody's aware that it's quite a big issue for an Israeli Jew, grandson of Holocaust survivors, to come live here in Berlin. But you see, he does. So what? Does it mean that I forgive? Does it mean that I forget? No. And time took its toll. Who could imagine 50 years ago that a Holocaust survivor, or his grandfather, would call a young German woman to greet her on her birthday? Thank you. Thank you for calling. How are you? We are okay. We're just packing. It's a little hard for us. Yes. To Berlin. The moment the plane flew away from the Israeli coastline and we saw Israel behind us, I felt a small twinge in my heart, a small and cute one. It will take us some time, I guess, to think that's it. We're settled. It's our new home. Home is where the heart is. Didn't you know that? Berlin, one of Europe's cultural epicenters, a city which draws people from all over the world because of its music, its bars, cafes, artistic venues. Here, everything exemplifies a cultural melting pot and urban dynamism. Israelis are estimated to number 17,000 of its cosmopolitan population. Many say they've run away from wars, politics, or economic pressures in their homeland. The cost of living is much cheaper in Berlin. An apartment may rent for as little as half the price of one in Tel Aviv. Young Israelis may therefore find here opportunities that they were denied in Israel. 
I used to be a teacher. I really appreciate the German public education system. I think it was very positive on my children. I wanted peace and quiet. I wanted to be free and away from all these issues and do exactly what I'm doing here. Daron and Amir moved to the German capital a few years ago. Together, they've opened a bookstore named Topics, following a provocative concept very fitting with the hipster culture of the city. At the store, each cube represents a topic, a theme. For instance, in the theme of castration here, all writers are transgenders. Here, the theme is factory. So you can see Warhol's La Factory, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and also in this factory section, a book about Auschwitz. Even though the two bookstore owners do feel integrated in the city, for these two Israeli Jews, the past and its issues are never very far away. Adolf Hitler's book Mein Kampf will enter the public domain as of next year. This fact has been fueling a fierce debate in German society. Such a debate is fascinating for Daron and Amir, grandchildren of Holocaust survivors. There isn't a more relevant place in the world to sell Mein Kampf. Look, you read and read and read about the Nazis and you would not be entitled to read the original? Why? Are you scared? Go read the real thing. It's part of German history, and as Jews, it's also part of our history. Nazis will come to a Jewish store to buy Mein Kampf. How ironic. Jews come to Germany to sell Mein Kampf to Germans, and they buy it. The sense of humor behind Daron's reflection on history's paradoxes has now prevented him from enduring very tough times from his parents when he announced his decision to leave for Berlin. My father and I went to family therapy, and it took me four to five years to tell him how much I was torn. That for me, being a Jew of the third generation after the Holocaust meant being torn. That's when my father understood for the first time what this departure meant to me. Had I told my grandfather that I was moving to Berlin and intended to open a bookstore there in which I would sell Mein Kampf, he would have said, you're a schmuck. He would have also added, always keep an eye open. Always watch your back. This suspicion, the new generation, doesn't have it any longer. After the Holocaust, a very large part of Israeli society decided to boycott everything that was German. The debate regarding the issue of accepting or not accepting financial compensation from the Germans was tearing apart the Israeli society. But today, young Israelis have decided to invest their money here instead of Israel. Oded Horesh, a 39-year-old Israeli, founded his investment company here two years ago. Today, his company assists Israelis who wish to invest in German real estate, a flourishing business. In the presence of older people, I always have that kind of question. Were they themselves or their fathers? But with people of my own age, I ask myself much fewer questions, because they seem to belong to a thoroughly different generation. Maybe the only way to face it is by doing what I have been doing, creating partnerships with this young generation and establishing business relations. The investors are Israelis, but everything else around them is German. Germany supports the whole European bloc on its shoulders. It's a place where I feel that I can invest Israeli money in a secure way. It looks like the end of World War II, around 1945. Look how Berlin was at that time, and look how it is today. So, you put all of this in a black box, and you move forward. Another trendy event in Berlin. Two young Israelis are organizing the opening of an exhibit by a Californian artist in their restaurant, The Gordon, where one can enjoy Israeli cuisine and eclectic music. The audience is very diverse. It's the right opportunity for questioning two young Germans, Lasse and Antonia, who are regular patrons. Being the third generation after Nazi rule, they too have this history and heritage. Antonia's mother is here too. She's about to unveil a terrible past that has been haunting her mind for a long time. And I didn't know it was owned by two Israeli guys, but then I came into the cafe and it just had this really cool interior and the food was really good too. Mm. The reaction actually I got when I met Israelis was so positive because they know we're a new generation and obviously we can't change the past. I think it would be wrong for our generation to feel guilty. It's just. But you yes. could feel guilty yes. thinking about like people, like really, really bad people and choices in the past. Well, I'm talking about Hitler. 
So he's not. Yeah. I then at least those photos are mine. So tall enough. But I don't know that. She's just saying that three of my like grandfathers were Nazis. Great grandfathers were Nazis. But I didn't even know that until like up to now. <laughs> okay. The parents of my mother I, I never knew. And my grandparents, the parents of my father died when I was small. I know it, but I I didn't never talk to them about that. I know it from other people, but I don't know if they really talk the truth. I'm not sure. And I think it's very common not to tell the truth. Nobody deals with it. It's, it's over, but it's not over. Because I think it's a question of looking into the mirror. Es drückt, es belastet mich immer noch. If Israelis, if Jews come back to Germany, it's thank you, <laughs> thank you for the confidence. It's I'm real, I'm touched. <laughs> yes, because only my Deutsch sagt, geschweige denn in English. Help me. My mom. <laughs> oh, yes, I am. <laughs> Again, we meet Ori and Evelyn, who are now settled in the German capital. They enjoy Berlin and its delights, although in the city so engrossed with history, the past is never very far away. This is a project by a German artist. He inserts plaques. They're called Stolperstein. Each one of them represents a person who used to live here and tells his or her story. Those over there apparently belong to the same family. You can see that the last three of them were deported to Auschwitz, and the first one was deported and murdered in Theresienstadt. The objective is to make passers-by remember what happened here. Look, we live right here, and over there in the next building, there was a man. He was among those who were gone. Over there, though, in the park where we walked by two seconds ago, children are having fun. That is Germany. Berlin an exceptional experience. So many personal and professional opportunities, a place of wonder and discovery. But who knows whether the German capital will be more than a mere parentheses in the lives of these young Israelis. Yorah Lieberman in the studio. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, David. Uh, so with the story, first thing that jumps out to me is the question, why are all these young Israelis moving to Germany in the first place? Well, I think we need to divide this answer to two. One is why people are leaving Israel and why are they going to Berlin. So people leaving Israel because of an economic, economical uh, problems, because of security, because of in their domain, music, art, they're kind of limited here in Israel. And that's why they're moving to Berlin, because the scene there of what they call hipster is much wider, and there are much more opportunities for, uh, for art, for music, etc. Uh, another uh, issue is that a lot of Israelis has European or uh, even German passports from their parents or great parents. And so this facilitates their uh, move there administratively. Uh, and the third thing is that the, the community, the Israeli community in Berlin mainly, is becoming very wide, and so it's easy to go there, to find work, to find people who to talk to, to find the magazine in Hebrew, to get 
the place be more friendly. So the path is there. It's an option for these people. Well, stepping away from the hipster side of this uh, aspect, which certainly makes sense, the cultural side, let's talk about something a bit more heavy here, the generational aspect of this move now uh, from, the, from the Holocaust, obviously. This is a relevant theme for any Israeli, any Jew moving to Germany now it has to come up. This third generation, as it's called, uh, of the young people now that are moving, do you believe that, or at least how do you explain the difference between this generation and, and maybe their parents' generation, the so-called second generation after the Holocaust? Could this have even happened in the parents' generation? I don't think this could happen because for the, first, for the second generation, the Holocaust and the Second World War was so fresh. The history was still there. They were grown up, educated by their parents who most of them passed through these horrible events. And so for them, this was all very, uh, 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 the history was still bubbling. And I think uh, at, at that time, during the 50s and the 60s, there was also a lot of uh, demonstrations and uh, people who were against the relations that have been established in the 60s. This is why so today is the 50 Some people years. were not always happy, especially in the 60s, you mentioned, about this sort of repairing of relations between yeah, Germany boycott. and Israel. There was a very serious boycott in Israel for every German product and, and, and things like what that. What about so on the other side of this now, the Germans themselves? Is there a generational shift that's taken place now today with the young Germans that they accept the Israelis differently? I think they accept the Israelis, and but they still have this very heavy past on their shoulders which is not necessarily something that was because of them, but because of other generations, and they have to carry it on and to try to go over it and to uh, move on. And they are working really hard on it, on the educational aspect, as well as the youth who is trying to get liberated and to start a new a, a, a something new in Germany. Uh, Yorai, thank you very much for bringing us the story. Fascinating, as always. Yorai Lieberman. Thank you very much, David. And we'll be back next week with more here on Inside Magazine. I'm David Matlin.